The ocean hides many secrets beneath its murky waters, many of which will horrify you. I hope you're ready as we dive deep into the unforgiving waves of darkness below us. Number one. My dad used to be an Avalon diver as a young man in Victoria, Australia. Money by the bag if you wanted it enough. Though half the guys that do it act like they're on cocaine most of the time from all the nitrogen in their blood. So it's a dangerous game that you can only play for so long. There's one story he told me about an encounter he had whilst diving with a mate. The water down in that part of Australia is thick and black and cold. The kelp is so thick that some people get lost in it and tangle their breather hose, or more often than you'd think, just disappear. Anyway, he's diving off a shell face about 90 meters and it's completely black. He said that you would just pull yourself along the face grabbing abalone by feel. The pressure is enormous. There are great whites swimming around with their mouths open who regularly attack divers or cut air hoses, which by the time you realize you're dead. Well, without rambling, he was making his way along a shelf, collecting, and felt a nudge on his back. His mate and him always worked in close tandem, so he just assumed it was him and reached out to pull him closer. But as soon as his hand touched it, it smashed him out the way and got its tail wrapped around the air hose which ripped it off the connector of my dad's mask. So he immediately got his little pen light out that he kept on his dive belt to check cuts. And he sees the end of the hose a few meters away spewing bubbles. The thing that gave me chills is the way that he describes the inky darkness 90 meters down. He could see nothing but the reflection of the bubbles on the hose and the dark lifeless eye of the great white behind it. As the great white swam away with his oxygen tank, he quickly surfaced and never went diving again. He never told my mum that. Number two. I was working on a car carrying vessel four years ago in the Middle East. Our typical route went through pirate waters at times, so we always packed four ex-marines as security in Jordan before we went. One night, whilst we were going through pirate waters off Yemen, we started having problems with the main engine, so we stopped and had to drift for a bit to figure out what the problem was. During this time, I was working on the stern, which is the back end of the vessel. I really couldn't see anything out in the ocean. Everything was dimly lit on the ship, and I don't know why, but I got bored and turned on the spotlight. And there he was, this guy with a gun, in a rusted little boat staring at me, about 15 feet away from the ship. I just stared back at him, kind of stunned. I was afraid if I reached a call for the radio for one of the marines he would shoot me, as the marines had weapons. So he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he sort of gave me a nod, as if he were telling me, well played, and I gave him one back. Then he slowly rowed his boat back off into the deep pitch black night. I don't know how many others there were, but I did call it in on the radio as soon as I lost sight of him. I still remember his face today, that deep stern concentrated look, 
is one I don't think I'll ever be able to forget. Number three. My brother and I decided to go on a sailing trip. We're both Marines, so we don't get to see each other often. After sailing for about two hours in the afternoon, we came across a small island. So we decided to camp on it between a decent patch of trees. At around 2 a.m. or so, we heard a boat coming towards us. Our fire had died down, but it was still visible. This was also a very remote area, so it just fell off that anyone would be coming to our campsite. We grabbed our weapons and quietly went into the tree line. Some scraggy looking guy started rifling through our shit and then started to walking towards our boat with a rope. I decided to confront him and my brother stayed back. To alert the stranger of my presence, I pumped a shotgun and asked him what the hell he was doing on our camp. But before this guy could say anything, I heard another guy in the darkness beyond the fire for me to drop my gun or he would kill me. Before I could react, my brother opened fire on the second guy and I shot the first guy. I retreated back to the tree line and my brother asked if I was good. I told him I was okay and we did a perimeter sweep, gathered our stuff and destroyed their boat. We then got back to shore and we contacted the state police and told them what happened. They detained us until our story could be checked out and then released us. So glad we decided to go there together. Well, there's a good chance one of us could have been killed. Number four. I was sailing a small sunfish around an island near Florida in shallow waters. As I cruised along suddenly, a large section of water directly in front of my bow exploded with a large splash. Immediately after, my boat rammed into something under the surface and came to a complete stop. My first thought was that I'd hit a reef, but suddenly the entire boat was lifted and spun around 90 degrees, almost dumping me into the water. Then there was another big splash and I saw something zoom away, leaving a wake behind. I was left freaking out and shaking then I thought to myself, I must have hit a big dolphin. Perhaps it was a manatee. Lots of dolphins around here. So I finished my sail and went home. When I got to the beach, I pulled up the centerpiece and found a real surprise. A two inch chunk had been bitten out of the wood. You could clearly see the marks of three large teeth. I am very happy that I did not fall out of the boat that day. Number five. I was diving off Florence, O.R. coast with some friends and we found a body on the ocean floor in the creepiest condition possible. He was a surfer who'd gone missing a few days prior. So he wore a wetsuit with his legs and arms and head exposed. Crabs had eaten the flesh from his exposed bits. So basically, he was a torso with a skull and skeletal limbs. The creepiest dive of my life though. Two buddies of mine and I were on a night dive in the Peugeot sound hunting prawns. It was around 1am and we were a good 100 feet deep. The pitchest black you can imagine. We used to do this thing on night dives where we would get full circle, turn off our lights, then stir up the water and watch the bioluminescence float around us 
like floating stars in black watery space. It's beautiful. Only this one time we turn off our lights, stir up the water and the water glows just enough to reveal a fourth person sitting in our circle. We were at a dive resort, so it wasn't odd to see another diver, only it was 1am and we'd seen no one else prepping for a dive at the dock. He was also alone, which was odd considering the dangerous conditions of a nighttime dive in those waters, not to mention that he had no gloves or fins. I don't know how he swam so well without them, or didn't get hypothermia without both gloves and boots. We wore dry suits because it was cold, but this dude was in a wetsuit, with exposed skin, and we thought we saw a giant gash on one of his legs. So the three of us all notice him, and we are too scared to move. I can hear my buddies panting in their regs and the guy just smiles and waves, and then swims away. That was, without a doubt, a hundred times creepier than the skeleton dude. Whenever you think you're alone, and someone just shows up, like in an alley at night, it's weird as hell. A hundred feet underwater at night, it's absolutely terrifying.